Uh, daylight saving switch this weekend, Kate. Yes. Fall backwards, Matt. Fall backwards. That's right. I think it's like fall back, not fall backwards, but <laughs> fall back. Fall back. Yes. Actually, uh, there's a clock. I'm not sure if you've seen this clock near the uh, the news area. It's already standard time because we're, we're switching back to standard time this weekend. Okay. Which is weird because standard time is now just like four months and daylight saving time is like eight Something like that. But hmm. regardless, there is a, a clock here that's already set itself uh, ahead. I mean, behind. Oh, God. Okay. I'm going to mess everybody up. Clear here. as mud, Matt. Continue. <laughs> right, because I think it had it built in once upon a time that uh, daylight saving switch was last weekend, you know, before they made the switch and put it after Halloween. And so every year at this time, this clock changes itself. So... It's a good, As God cre- intended, right? I guess. And it, so it's a good tip that, uh, oh, coming up this weekend, daylight saving switch fall back an hour. But it also could give one a false sense of security that, oh, there's plenty of time, you know, since it's already behind. So. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. I like the false sense of security. I'm glad that you're pointing that out. Right. Don't fall into that trap. Now, where are you at on this? Because I hate both of them. I hate the switch at all because it just, it, it doesn't matter if I'm, quote, gaining the hour or not. I don't like my time being messed with like that. Where do you fall? Do you, okay. do you appreciate this one? Or? I feel like I adjusted better before being a mom. I feel like before it was just me dealing with my own, um, you know, schedule and trying to figure it out. And I'm just grumpy, but trying to get other people on board and not grumpy and, and, and deal with them trying to deal with it. I think it's a little bit harder. And so I, I dread the first 48 hours of the time change. That's usually where I'm at the first two days are the hardest. And then it's like, what's everybody complaining about? (laughs) But when it was just me, I could just sleep it off. I can't just sleep it off now. And I can't just let the kids sleep it off. I don't know. Is it better because you do it on a Saturday? Is there another day that you think would it be easier? Or do you think we should just do away with it altogether? Well, you mean on a Sunday or are you talking about like Saturday night? Or what do you mean yeah. when you say you do like it? Like when, when, when I think of it as Saturday night. I know that it's Sunday, I guess. but You don't get up at 3 a.m. and change your clock then? No. Hmm. No. See, that's a time-honored tradition in my household, Kate. <laughs> Set your alarm, kids. Set an alarm to get up to change the clock, yeah. Nope. In fact, I have been known to leave, like, my microwave clock or my kitchen clock. Like, ugh, I got to change my clock. I'll do that here in a minute, and then maybe a couple days later I change it. So I disabled the clocks on my microwave and on my stove, and then the only one I really have to change is my rice cooker clock, Kate. Why would you disable the clock on your microwave and stove? I just don't need them. I don't need those. Okay. Is it? uh, Okay. But the rice cooker clock, you got it going because you use your rice cooker more than your microwave and stove? Well, Kate, here's the fantastic thing about that rice cooker. I can tell at what time I want the rice to be done. Right. Not what time to start the rice, Kate. What time the rice should be done. And it's a game changer, Kate. It's and it game adjusts. Game. And it stays and s- on your, your counter constantly. Yes. Yeah. Now, it's not up in your face like the microwave and the stove are, <laughs> but it's right there. What? Up in your face like your microwave and your stove are. Is your microwave on your counter? Well, you've got to look over the top of the rice cooker. And I mean, because the rice cooker is at, like, countertop. Okay. But the time display is on top of the rice cooker. And it's not illuminated. Like okay. What would be illuminated? Do you just not need to know what time it is when you're in your kitchen? I've got my watch. Okay. Maybe that's why. Okay. I don't know. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I guess. Yeah, I don't need to know the time in there. If I need to. So do you disable the the clock in your car? No, there's no there's no way to do that. I do okay. end up changing that one. I just think it's funny that you're like, I don't need no stinking clock on my microwave and stove. Yeah, I've got my smart assistant, and I can yell out what time it is, or no, what time is it, excuse me. Okay. And, uh, and, and get it that way if my hands are occupied and I can't get my watch up to my face. So. <laughs> your watch up to your face, gotcha. 
<laughs> I, I know everything's I in my face, right? A clock has got to be apparently just in my face, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I do use the smart speaker for timers as opposed to using the timer on the microwave or the stove. Exactly. But I use the clock on the microwave on the stove. Right. Even though I am wearing a watch. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. I know. Hardcore. Matt doesn't like knowing the time. I just don't uh, feel the need no. to set the time all the time. That makes sense. And at your place currently, I mean, doesn't it seem like you lose power every other day. That drive me bananas having to constantly reset the uh, reset the time. Oh my gosh! Yep, yep, yep. And uh, it's funny. This morning, I was waking the girls up. They're like, "Did we lose power last night?" I'm like, "Oh man, did we?" Because I hadn't paid attention to see if there were clocks blinking. But no, their clock had uh, uh, got. It's okay. It usually is on their dresser. For some reason, over the weekend or during playtime, it went to the Ninja Turtle lair. (laughs) And it was behind the dumpster of the Ninja Turtle lair. So they thought that the clock was off because they couldn't see the clock. I'm like, nope, just behind the dumpster and then the lair. Don't worry about it. They haven't learned object permanence yet? Apparently not. But it was still (laughs) kind of dark in the room. Turtles got to know the time. Right. In fact, there was a movie, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time. I mean, it was still dark. So they weren't riffing on that, though. Turtles in a half shell. Turtle power. Turtle power, indeed. Is that officially licensed nin- Ninja Turtle dumpster? or? Yeah. Okay. Part of the Damn, lair. I need to see this setup. It sounds pretty sweet. Part of the lair. Best um, hand-me-down present that I found for a birthday gift ever. I was trying to think. Oh. One year we gave um, Finley... Uh, a Disney princess castle and it's kind of a heavy duty one that my husband had to like put together and really nice. And then two months later it's Elliot's birthday and she's big in a Ninja Turtles. I'm like, what do I buy? And then I found uh, something online. So I posted it on Facebook. Does anybody know? Does anybody have one? They want to sell me. And I had a friend who's like, yes. And she only sold it to me for $25 and she bought it for over a hundred dollars. And she said, here's the deal. If you get rid of it, Whatever you sell it for, we have to split it. I'm like, done. But we haven't sold it. So which era of Ninja Turtles is this from? Is this from the, the ones from when we were kids or more recent uh, issue? Of- no, more recent. I would say it's okay. at least five years old. Okay. But it is it has made the move. So we've got the, bar, or the uh, Disney Princess Castle and then the Ninja Turtle Lair. And they used to be next door to each other, but we had to move them for space purposes. But. Oh, okay. Yeah. Those were the main toys that the girls wanted to keep out of storage when we had to pack up the playroom. I was like, listen, we are not taking the playroom to the apartment. So it's a good variety. That's a good mix. I thought so. I thought so. Man, yeah, I loved Ninja Turtles as a kid. So good. Got a lot of Ninja Turtles. A lot of Ninja Turtles. Good. Good to know. Yeah. Were you into Ninja Turtles as a kid or? I didn't mind. My brother, who's right behind me, he liked them. So I watched him with them. But I didn't get as excited about Ninja Turtles as he did. April O'Neil in that hot yellow jumper. Oh, April. Tell you what. Oh, April. I did IMDb and that's not helping me. Yeah, no kidding. Wikipedia. I tell you what, IMDb used to be uh, amazing. I go there so often. And then Amazon bought it and it seemed like Amazon just uses it as a way to sell movies on Amazon. I, just, I don't think it's find it that good anymore. I did not know that Amazon bought that. Interesting. Yep. That's why it's not as good. Okay. Well, I did get on there last night because I was watching a show and I was trying to figure out that looks like this guy from this thing. So I looked up the thing I thought and there he was. Yeah. I just go to Wikipedia now for that stuff. Now, see, Wikipedia, people can still change it, right? They've got pretty good editors. Okay. And, uh, that lock down most of those. Plus, it'd be kind of weird to go just, like, ha- hack the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle ones. Yes. Killing off Sinbad, though, is far more appetizing. <laughs> <laughs> far more appetizing. Well, they lock down certain, like, uh, public figures. I don't need to go into explicit detail on who. Okay. Where they were constantly changing uh, the person's photo to uh, an obscene image. Oh. You know? I'll let you use your imagination on what that might be. Okay. A political figure? <laughs> and uh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't hear that part. Anyway. Um, <laughs> See, I'm so in the dark. So after a while, they just, they locked down that, they locked down certain Wikipedia pages to prevent vandalism from happening. 
vandalism. Hmm. Yeah, no, it, it, so it got to the point, like, the iPhone, if you use Siri, when you ask it to look up this person, like, hey, show me the Wikipedia about such and such, uh, you would see this Im- <laughs> You would see the image. Interesting. And then suddenly you've got uh, basically pornography there on your phone looking at oh, you. Oh, so. that's no good. Yeah. But they thought the image was a good substitute for this person. So, you know, what are you going to do? Matt, did I tell you I've been doing that fasting thing where I don't eat until noon and then I stop eating <laughs> at 8 p.m.? Did I tell you about that? Um, yes. And I believe I'm, I believe this is partly my fault, right? Because wasn't I talking about doing it? I don't know. Fault. I would say inspired by. I use that when I, oh, okay. I try to make my life better. I go, ah, oh, Matt's inspiring me because Matt does lots of things to make his life better and easier and skinnier and <laughs> I can't do it. No, I've been doing it for a long time. I've been doing it probably uh, since August. And that feels like a long time when you're going to go with like a diet for some reason that now here we are in late October that I've done at least two months successfully. Oh, congrats. Thanks. However, last night, (laughs) however, I've been really strict Monday through Friday, really strict. And if I, um, I'm sometimes not always able to eat right at noon, but I still shut off at eight o'clock, even though I didn't eat anything until one o'clock, I'll still say no food after eight o'clock. Um, but yesterday, I don't know what it was. And I, I don't know if I was, um, the only one who was feeling, it was just kind of in a funk day and I ate lunch and I had a snack in the afternoon, but when I was doing dinner last night, I just really wasn't that hungry, but like right around, I got the girls to bed right around eight o'clock. I was like, I need something and I don't know. I I wanted food to wrap me up in a blanket and like give me a hug. Well, it's a good time of year for that. I know. And I didn't, I'm like, it's eight o'clock. I shouldn't do that. But what is something that's going to give me a little comfort? Something that's not like, not like a bowl of ice cream, you know, something that is not the most horrible decision. So I went with fried chicken TV dinner. (laughs) I went with dinosaur chicken nuggets. Is that right? No, I went with just uh, two pieces of toast. Oh, okay. Toast. With real butter, real Good. salted butter. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. And I maybe was a little bit more generous on the butter. Okay, I ate a stick of butter. Okay, it was two sticks of butter. <laughs> but I just, I needed something, but I felt like that was the floodgates because then I had the toast. I'm like, well, it's 8.15. I might as well have something. So I had two thin mints. After that. So I definitely got like okay. a hug and a kiss from food last night. Buttered bread. Buttered bread and minty chocolate. Chase with thin mints. Yeah. And you got those in before eight o'clock? No, I didn't. It was like 8 30 uh. by the time. And you ate at what time before then? I mean, what was your first meal yesterday? Uh, about 12 30. You were okay then. But I had a snack. Right? I had it. I hope so. I've been so good about shutting off at eight. You stayed within an eight hour window, right? Right. Been so yeah. good about shutting off at eight. And I've kind of felt like I mm. let myself down after I ate. But then at the same time, the toast just made me feel like, you know, when you're not feeling good, you're like, you know, it would be good toast. Not feeling good. Go for toast. Was this a, a mental hunger instead of like you were physically hungry then? Is that what you're? I think it was a little bit hungry, but at the same time needed the mental. And I didn't. Go for the bottle of wine. So I thought toast would be a smarter choice. Hey. I say bottle of wine. A, a glass of wine. Like, should I have a toast or should I have toast or a bottle of wine? I didn't reach for the bottle to open it to pour a glass. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's fair. You know, when Monty's out of town, I mean. Go nuts with the wine. Yeah. Right. All fair. That's when you you switch from bottles to boxes, right? When Monty's out of town. I did. I did. That's how I really got into boxed wine. Just sit there on the couch, giant, like a straw going into the box. Like it's a big old juice box. It's a camel pack. <laughs> Kate, do you give yourself a break from that? So this is intermittent fasting that you're doing. Do you give yourself a break on the weekends for it? or? Yeah, and I don't know if that is sabotage. No, I think cheat days that are especially built in are... Or helpful. I still try to make good, like good food choices on the weekend. 
but I mm-hmm. may not make myself wait till noon, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Give yourself a give yourself a little bit of a break. Don't want to burn out, right? You know, and, and I think a weekend is nat is a perfectly natural place to take that break. Oh, but so. then I'm like, well, what's one more day? I, I'm always, you lost right. three pounds. Go ahead and celebrate, girl. Get that ice cream. So <laughs> I never used to be locked in on a scale, and I'm trying really hard not to be. But it feels like I am doing lots of things, Matt, and I'm not seeing lots of results like I used to. So I'm wondering how much age and hormones have to do with all that. You know, those fun topics. Mm-hmm. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah. Yeah, my hormones get me all the time. All the time. You, how often do you weigh yourself? Now it's about once a week. Once a week. Okay, that's how often I do also. I used to be like every day. Yeah, it is interesting to see that every day, but mm-hmm. get in your own head a little bit. Oh, man. Yeah. Yep. And then you weigh yourself in the uh, the morning? In the morning. Okay. I think that makes sense, too. After I pee. Good to know. In my birthday suit. Yeah. Yeah. That's yep. how you got to do it. Because those clothes will really tack on a good 15 pounds, so. <laughs> 15. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you wear a, I was curious why you wear a suit of armor around all over the place. Are you that worried <laughs> that you're going to get injured? Yes. Some yes. Implement's going to get you? Shin guards and. That's, I'd say that's a good workout. Oh, man. Have you considered cosplaying at the Ren Fest? We know when the uh, when the before times return. <laughs> Huzzah! <laughs> hey, speaking of the Ren Fest, Matt, I did get an email from you the other day with huzzah in it, and I thought, oh, <laughs> right. I pictured Matt with his little, like, fist in the air and a little cap like the the uh, minstrels would wear at the Ren Fest, because you're yeah. not the jester. So did you enjoy that, my lady? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, milady. Yes. Yeah, I'll type out huzzah in an email when I get excited about something. Yeah. I think that's sweet. I mean, oh, if I think of you thanks. in tights and <laughs> carrying a little tiny guitar around, that's on me. But, yep. or I think of uh, people walking around with giant turkey legs. <laughs> Just like, how? Oh. Because that's what I think of with the Ren Fest. Oh, yeah, I still need to find that photo of that old woman eating that turkey leg over that trash can. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that one photo. You mean uh, that's not blown up in your living room? <laughs> that should be. That would, I do need to print off some of my photos and just like have a massive poster-sized old lady eating a turkey leg over a trash can on my wall. You guys, this was such a good day. Check out this lady. Yeah. People go, oh, where'd you get that poster? Go, that's an original. Are you asking a, where I got it printed from? But I took the photo. Stuke's original. Yeah, that's right. Wouldn't that be funny if you posted it on our Facebook page and someone's like, that's my grandma. <laughs> Well, your grandma's really cool, and now up in Matt Stukes' living room. (laughs) Your grandma's in my living room. What a horrifying, (laughs) horrifying Uh, thought for so many people. (laughs) Grandma's in my living room. Kate, it's engagement season? Yeah. Can you explain this to me? Did you know that? I did not, but it kind of makes sense. I have not uh, read up or know very much about this, but it kind of makes sense, but I'll let you explain first. Okay, so uh, almost 50% of engagements happen between Thanksgiving and New Year's. And there's a couple of hotels in California that are Mm. here to help you make that proposal, like, pop. It's going to be even bigger than making a lifelong commitment with a shiny new ring. It's huge. It's called the Sky's the Limit Engagement Package. And they're not kidding when they say the sky is the limit, Matt. The package starts at $9,900. It includes the ring delivery by a drone. And the entire proposal is filmed by hidden cameras and a second drone. And the package also includes a one-night stay in an ocean view suite, bottle of champagne, dinner for two, and a fully produced engagement documentary. A documentary. Documentary. So that's where a lot of the money could be going. You know, everybody's into like The Bachelor and so you could talk about it. I'm like, oh my gosh, I just didn't know it was going to happen. I mean, I picked out the ring for him, but but you can also upgrade the package in case that's not enough and getting a message on the Ferris wheel at the Santa Monica Pier that reads, marry me. So it's a standard message. You can't be like, marry me, Melissa. It's just marry me. But- did you notice what's not included? A ring? A ring. $9,900 engagement package, and the ring is not part of it. 
Well, you might want to pay an additional ten grand on just the ring, you know? True story. True story. But I will say, I did not realize that so many engagements happen between Thanksgiving and New Year's. And I we apparently missed the mark by like two weeks. We got engaged in November, but not after Thanksgiving. Right. So that's what throws me. So I saw it's like engagement season, and I figured that meant right now, but this is saying specifically between Thanksgiving and New Year's, Mm -hmm. which throws out, that kind of destroys my theory. Okay. What's your theory, Matt? Well, isn't Thanksgiving the biggest, like, family, like, extended family holiday? Isn't it more so than Christmas? I probably, it is in my family, so that must be true for everybody else, right? Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Um, I think that's how that works, yes. That's legit. Yeah. So I thought that maybe like right now we were in engagement season, even though it, maybe we are, maybe we're just at the very beginning of it. But if right. 50% are basically after Thanksgiving and before the end of the year, it throws in my theory that you want to get, you get engaged now. That way, show me the, show us the ring, you know, would right. be happening at Thanksgiving. Now, see, I thought it was going to be Christmas to Valentine's. I thought that's a good window because then you've got Christmas, you've got New Year's, and then you also like cap it off with Valentine's. But I got engaged, like you said, like two weeks before Thanksgiving. So when we were around everybody at Thanksgiving, I was like, bam, check this out. Yeah. See, I would think as someone who's never considered uh, getting married, I would think. eh. Different subject. Go ahead. Yeah. (laughs) I would think, okay, yes, I better go ahead and do this now because in the other room at Thanksgiving, there's going to be the uh, conversations happening. Has he popped the question yet? You know, that kind of oh, stuff. Oh, so you would protect your your fiancé by giving her the actual story to talk about as opposed to making her feel really bad about herself around her family. Like That's the kind of gentleman I would be, yes. That's nice. If I were to be such a gentle person. That's nice. See, we met in November, got engaged in November, and then got married in November. Uh, what kind of spread was this? Met in 06, engaged 07, married 08. Baby 09. Woo! Oh my God, Kate. Yeah. And then not divorced yet. Nope. Hmm. And living in an apartment and building a house. Still got it, baby. Still got it. I was going to say you, you actually failed to maintain the appropriate pacing. We did. It's like We did. And that's okay. You're supposed to have the kid and then a year later be divorced based on the uh, the time frame there. Oh, I thought you meant like another kid and another kid and another kid. No, no, no. No. Nope. Nope. Checking boxes. Checking boxes. Yeah. Yeah. Date, engaged, married, kid, divorced. But, uh, but congratulations on. Thank you. In 2008, we had eight family weddings between my family, yeah. like my mom's side and my dad's side. And because I was the last one to get engaged, November was the first month that was open in 2008. And it made sense that we did November. So we got married uh, the weekend before Thanksgiving so that everybody oh. would be in town for the wedding and just stay in town for Thanksgiving. It was fantastic. Yeah, that makes total sense. Yes. It did. At first, I wanted Thanksgiving weekend, Matt, because everybody would be in town for Thanksgiving. And yeah. thankfully, the day it was, uh, the day at the church was not available, which made great sense because I got married and then had Thanksgiving, which meant I don't have to fit into a dress. I can eat mashed potatoes and gravy. And if I had to fit into a dress two days later, I don't know if I would have had a very... Uh, filling thanksgiving like i normally do oh yeah, yeah. That's good to know. yeah so good tip yeah it worked out however we did go to mexico like four days after thanksgiving so i mean it was a little bit bigger on the beach then <laughs> yeah but i didn't know anybody it was fine i yeah, didn't what's care. the point of your uh, honeymoon if uh, strangers can't appreciate your hot body you know <laughs> wow she looks like she had a lot of mashed potatoes a couple of days ago right <laughs> But then you know that you're being compared to everyone else's mashed potato body, right? Right. And there were some old mashed potato bodies, so <laughs> I looked real good. Oh, yeah, you looked better than the the old people? I did. I did. Oh, well, how nice. But it was goals because I was like, I want to live like those people, that they can go to Mexico after Thanksgiving every year. And be old. And be old. Yeah. Fingers crossed. God willing, the creek don't rise. All that stuff. Fingers crossed. What? God willing and the creek don't rise. I have not heard that expression, but I need to add that to my book. 
Yes, add that yeah. to your book, Matt. Because we were talking yesterday, we had new, knee high to a grasshopper, mm-hmm. rode hard and put up wet. Oh, gosh, I really don't <laughs> think that that's one that should be explained. Like, we got it. We got it. And uh, what's the one? God willing and the creek don't rise. Okay, because if the creek rises, it could float the house away. Is that what that means? It could ruin your plans. Okay. I'll be gotcha. there, God willing, and the creek don't rise. Now, is the creek don't rise it's because God's willing that the creek don't rise? I, that, I'm not sure. Do those go hand in hand? Okay. Well, that's why you put that in your book, and we'll do our research. Yeah, in case anybody missed it, I want to learn a bunch of old-timey sayings and start using them uh, in real life and then maybe also on the show. And I don't know how old God willing in the creek don't rise is because That's gotta be old. I still hear it. Well, that doesn't mean it doesn't have an old origin. You know? True. True. Are you talking also like uh, s- comparing things like, man, it's raining like blank, 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 blank. Is that like an old timey saying or is that? Because uh, I've got some good ones of those. Oh, yeah, until the cows come home would be one. All right. right? Uh, urinating on a flat rock. What? It's raining like the cow. Urinate, urinating is not the word in the in the statement, <laughs> just to oh. be clear. Okay. But, man, it's raining like a cow urinating on a flat rock. Ever heard that one? I think the urinating one sounds better, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was a grown-up when I heard that for the first time, and I thought I was going to, like— yeah, I hadn't heard that one either. Shoot water out my nose because I was laughing so hard from it. I have not heard that one either. Well. I remember on well. NYPD Blue, there was an episode where Detective Sipowitz. Dennis Franz. Dennis Franz, fantastic uh, actor and fantastic character. One of the best. Um, needed to use the restroom. Right. You know, and so they're just BSing or whatever. And you know, I got to go pinch a loaf. And then he... <laughs> 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 he walked away, and I had not heard that expression. Oh, jeez. And I was like, Sip away, it's you're teaching me stuff over here. And every time somebody says NYPD Blue, I think of Sipowitz and the big controversy that was that he had like a, a shower scene and we saw his butt. He did have a gross butt. It's like of all the people to be on network television showing their butt, Sipowitz is not the butt I want to see. Well, they focused on, uh, help me out here. Uh, Sharon Lawrence? No, uh, David Caruso. Ugh, gross. They had his butt on there first. Oh, he had a butt scene too? They took a long time before they got to Sipowitz's. I think they were just like, fine, I guess we'll go ahead and show Sipowitz. Wasn't Jimmy Smith's on there? I mean, let's see his booty. Why do we have to see Caruso and Sipowitz? We may have seen Jimmy Smith's uh, rear end. This may have been on there. All right. Let me see. What Wikipedia, Jimmy, Jimmy Smith's NYPD Smith's booty. up here. <laughs> On NYPD Blue. Uh, his butt that gets buried on uh, uh, Yeah, Smith's looking. It is my butt. Yeah, he didn't have a stunt butt. So, yeah, there you go. Jimmy Smith's. Okay. Now, unfortunately, you know, Janet Jackson. Remember the Janet Jackson incident at Super Bowl? Nipplegate. It's. Uh, Wasn't that unfair? That removed all the butts from uh, future episodes of NYPD Blue. It ruined NYPD Blue. As it should. What? As it should. Okay. If they're not going to make a big deal about Jimmy Smith's or Dennis Franz's patoot, but Janet Jackson, that was ridiculous. That was a little bit overblown, yeah. Oh, terribly unfair. But as a result, yeah, we never got to see R- Ricky Schroeder's rear end, probably. That's probably okay. Or uh, Silver Spoons. Uh, Mark Paul Gossler was on that show. No, he wasn't. Was he? Yes, he was in the last couple seasons. I didn't watch that show. I just, that's what I think of. Oh, MIPD Blue is a great show. Mm. Man. And then, yeah, so many great Sipowitz lines. Lots of which I can't say on the radio. I was going to say, I'm mm. surprised you went with the one that you did go with. Pension a loaf? Yes. <laughs> because there's no other options or what? Or that one was too intense? No, I'm, I'm surprised that that's what you went with. And why? Like, that's probably one that I would have been, like, off the microphone telling you about. I'm surprised you went with it. I went with urinating on a flat rock. <laughs> and urinating is not the right word, but pinching a loaf. I'm surprised you went with that one. You could say pinch a loaf and someone might not know what you're talking about, though. Right, but everybody who does know what you're talking about goes, ooh. <laughs> well, you're the one that brought it back up. You know, I, I, was did, gonna... I just said I was surprised you said I it. Just... 
when you're going to make the reference to a lot of them, I can't say on the air. I'm like, well, you said that one, so why not? Well, that one like doesn't have a word in it that is explicitly true listed true. by the FCC. You know, true. So I get you. Kate, I've talked to you about uh, my Apple Watch slash fitness band type stuff, right? Yes. Uh, I'm no longer wearing the uh, the Garmin one to monitor my sleep. I've gotten over sleep monitoring. I feel pretty good about the sleep right now, and I got sick of putting it on each each night. And I started getting too many comments like, why are you wearing two fitness trackers? And I just didn't want to explain myself anymore. Did you not go with Flava Flav? No? I did not. No. Okay. Just throwing that out there. Uh huh. So I, I mentioned this because today the first thing I do when I uh, get up is typically I put my my watch on. I need to make sure I get credit for <laughs> every little movement after I wake up, you know. Right. And then the second thing is I walk into the kitchen and start my uh, kettle, start my electric kettle to get my uh, my tea going, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And so I was halfway across the house. And I briefly considered, because I forgot, I forgot to put the watch on first thing. And I briefly considered going back and grabbing my <laughs> grabbing my watch before uh, completing the journey to the kitchen to put the electric kettle on. And I felt so thoroughly owned by this device. I was going to say, how'd that make you feel, Matt? Yeah, I felt, yeah, possessed by this device. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A and, slave to it. Well, and it also may just be an indicator that uh, it's like, maybe you should just work out so much more that like 30 seconds of stepping isn't all that valuable to you. (laughs) You I understand though, because if I have to plug my watch in and then I lose steps, I'm like, Oh man, like there are times that I bring my charger in the car with me. If I know I'm going to be running errands Mm -hmm. that I can charge my watch while I'm driving. Cause I'm not going to miss any steps while I'm driving, but don't want to plug it in next to me while I'm, you know, working because I might have to go to the next room for something and unplug the watch, put it back on, come back. Got to get steps. I know a lot of people will, in the grocery store, push Mm -hmm. the cart with one arm and then swing their other arm to make sure they get all those uh, steps counted too. I'm not sure if you've seen this maneuver. I have not seen that maneuver. Okay. Yeah, that's a tip also. Um, Because if your hands are resting on the cart, it's not going to jostle as much. No kidding. You may not uh, count your steps. Yeah, it depends on your tracker. Which one do you have again? I have a Fitbit Charge 3. How often do you have to charge that? Like every four days or five days. Gotcha. Maybe. But I always think about that like on the days where I'm going to Sam's. I'm like, oh, I'm going to get some good steps today. And it's never as many as I think. But if I am... Pushing the cart, that would make sense. Well, yeah, maybe next time give it a test and see. Yeah. I wonder about pulling the cart. Do you ever pull the cart? You probably don't. I have to pull the cart sometimes because I have a helper pushing the cart or I've got people oh, okay. in the cart or, yeah, so sometimes I will pull the cart. By the front of the uh, yes. cart or, okay. Yeah, I'm, I've done that before if I need to get into a uh, an area where there's other people or something. I'm sure yeah. I've done that before, yeah. but not on any regular basis. I used to let the girls mm-hmm. push the cart a whole lot more, but since current times, I don't like to have them at the <laughs> store if I can, but it's, it's just more like high anxiety in general. I'm like, I, I have to push the cart. Just either get in or walk behind me. Or just come on. We got to go. Right. <laughs> like, we know the real workout would be if you would just give your kid a piggyback ride the entire time that true. you're pushing the cart. But you True. wouldn't get credit for that. Your device nope. would not give you credit for that. So it doesn't count as actual physical exercise and does not make you any stronger if the thing doesn't log it. It doesn't get you yeah. any fireworks when you reach your step goal. Nope. Nope. <laughs>